Dick Sauer made a splash with their P322, which is a silly fun gun to shoot, but they're taking it even further with the P322 Comp. But can you make a 22 pistol be reliable with a massive compensator? But if you could, it'd be even more silly fun. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David, and this is the Six Sauer P322 Comp. And what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. Dad jokes are in the cards today because I had the P322 Comp on the range with my nine-year-old just to prove it out to see if if it was usable in the hands of little kids. There we go, buddy. What you think? All right, that's pretty good. I like this. P I like this P322. No issues with the mags I loaded. And I'm happy to report it absolutely is. So the P322 Comp is a fancy name. It's kind of a double entendre because it has a massive compensator. See compensator, but also it could be used in pistol competitions like in Steel Challenge. This would be a great gun for rim fire pistol optics. And before we go any further, I do want to call out that this is a media sample gun that was sent to me by Sig Sauer so I can make a video for you guys. But let's talk about what comes in the box with this gun. In the box is going to be two magazines, 120 round and 125 round magazine, and they both work just fine. I'll touch more on how to do that later. But the departure from the traditional P322 is that it comes with this polymer slide racker and the milling on the slide is different to accept it. It comes with the Romeo Zero Elite installed on the gun. It obviously comes with this compensator at the front of the gun, but on this side of the pistol you get the sport takedown lever, which is a fancy way of saying thumb rest, but SIG has to use their six hour speak. And there is an extended magazine release as well. So pretty much all of the premium features that you would kind of want on the gun, except for maybe an aluminum trigger shoe. It's the same polymer trigger shoe that is on the regular P322. Beyond that, the machining on the slide has changed a little bit. You can kind of see the slide as it comes into the compensator. Uh, the lines are not kind of rounded and blunted sort of like they are on the regular gun, and you have these serrations on top of the slide, which are not there on the regular gun. Also in the box is a highly functional mag loader and a red tipped recoil spring. We're taking the slide off the frame because this is a fixed barrel frame, like you have to hook the slide off the back and then lift it forward. You have to remove the compensator to remove the slide, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Real quickly, just wanting to address uh, how you take the compensator off. There are two set screws at the bottom of the compensator. The one closest to the frame of the gun is the one you loosen and the compensator will come off. The middle one, you can loosen and remove the center section of the baffle in the compensator. Eventually, aluminum comps will erode right there. So rather than replacing the whole comp, you can just replace that baffle, which is pretty good foresight in engineering from SIG. And the red recoil spring is actually a reduced power spring so that you can run lighter weight ammo. I didn't use it because I didn't want to take the comp off the gun, but it's cool that they're thinking about that kind of stuff. The sell price is not going to be cheap on this gun since it comes with a red dot sight and all that. It is going to sell for about $650, which is not an inexpensive pistol, but it does come with basically every bell and whistle you could throw at it. Now, I've already reviewed the P322, kind of the basic gun, when it came out about a year ago. So if you want more information on this gun, I encourage you to watch that video once this one's done, and you can get kind of all the base details, because what's generally true about that gun is generally true about this gun as well. As far as the shooting is concerned, the compensator absolutely does its job. All right, first shots with the 322 comp did that get one it got one all right let's see what happens this, these are mini mags so they should go well <laughs> As far as the shooting is concerned, the compensator absolutely does its job. The dot lift in the window is almost nil. Like basically if you look through the window and you see your front sight, that's about how much the dot moves inside the glass. It's about a front sight height if you have a really good grip. That uh, That's absurd, it, uh, it doesn't move. That's uh, a lot of fun. I've got my nine year old with me, so we'll see what he thinks. While the slow motion compared to the regular non compensated gun doesn't show this gun being like amazingly flat or shooting or anything like that, I can tell you that the perception of recoil is basically turned off with this pistol, which is a saying a lot because this pistol has almost no muzzle climb as it is. 
and this is actually a step up over it. It's just absurdly fun to shoot. The accuracy from this gun is decent at about 15 yards. I was printing about a three inch group, which, you know, this isn't a precision pistol necessarily. It's good enough to ring steel with out to 25 if that's what you're doing. So I thought it was plenty fun because the grip is bigger, kind of concepted for adults. Like the smallest kids are going to have issues. My nine year old was with me on the range and you could see that his thumb didn't get all the way around the pistol to the safety. So it is kind of a bigger grip for smaller handed folks. I think full grown women and definitely men are gonna have a great time with this pistol. It fits great in the hand. The traction's good enough where it stays planted and now it's got just this absurd compensator. So it's a great way to introduce shooting to new shooters. There is almost no recoil and the 22 rounds aren't that loud. So it's a really great choice for that. And because it does have the slide racker, uh, bad Aguila round, slide racker. <laughs> when you invariably get 22 rounds that don't work, you can rack them out really easily. I think a lot of families are gonna have a lot of fun with this pistol. Before we get going on reliability, I do want to say thank you to my Patreon and local supporters. Check out Locals, guys. It's free, you can sign up. There are free posts. You can see behind the scenes stuff over there. There is a link in the description. And a shout out to Optics Planet, where you absolutely shouldn't try the code H-U-M-M, because it does absolutely nothing, or Lock Crips, where code HUMBLE does nothing. Don't try it. So what people are probably most curious about in iOS 2 is can you make the gun work with such a massive compensator? I mean, this is more than what they're putting in their other compensated firearms that just have the slide comp technology. And does it even do anything on a 22 pistol? See how much this comp works. I'm gonna shoot close to the chest. Yeah, that's not, that's not fun to do. It's definitely throwing the smoke right up in my face. Ah, yeah, that's so good, so good. And yes, they made the gun work well with most ammunition and it works way better because 22 LR is actually a pretty gassy load. So there's a ton of gas that comes directed up from this compensator. I was actually really surprised how much the compensator affected the gun. So I hollowed out the shelves of my local Academy and Shields and bought all of the different 22 brands sort of available. And I was happy to see that it was reliable with pretty much all of them. The Gila has a bunch of wax on it. It's built up, it's making it, I tested in the other 322. It's just not going, it's uh probably be safe for the rifle. And the issue with the Aguila is that it has like this waxy coating. I bought it before this past summer, which was really hot and it sat in my garage locked up and the waxiness was just kind of weird. It was going dead a lot. It was having feeding issues a lot, I think due to the waxiness. Uh, bad Aguila round. Slide wrecker. <laughs> Another bad round, Aguila. So the Aguila was the only ammunition that didn't work. The other ammunition that gave us not reliability problems, but accuracy problems was the Winchester Western ammunition, which is a lower velocity ammo. I did get a couple tumblers. It wasn't a ton. It would be like two out of an entire magazine when you put it on paper. If you're having issues connecting with steel, be sure to put it on paper and look at the shape of the bullet holes. Some of them will be elongated, which is telling you the ammo is tumbling. The ammo we did get to work with it. Better old bring your own bucket ammo. All right, this is Blazer out of the little milk cartons. Let's see what happens. Winchester Western. All right, CCI, standard velocity 22. This is actually Remington Thunderbolt. The other Remington I said was actually Golden Bullets. Let's see what happens. Winchester Western is reliable, but not accurate. I didn't try any subsonic loads because those generally don't work great in pistols. And I didn't use any rat shot because that is just dumb. So the reliability is actually pretty good. Now the other side of reliability is actually knowing how to load the magazine. And some of you guys have probably already fired up in the comments that the magazines don't work and all this kind of stuff. I was able to teach my nine year old how to load the magazines. No issues with the mags I loaded. All right, Jack loaded these mags. See how you, good job, Jack. I hope I did. I hope you did too. The last one I loaded did good. Yeah. Reliable, both to 20 and 25 rounds. So it is absolutely reliable. Your technique just isn't quite right. So you use this mag loader and you hook it over the magazine so that it's pulling down on these tabs and you pull it down just enough to get the 22 round in. You have to feed it from the front 
to the back. But once the round is in there, just push back on the round so that the base of the bullet lines up with the back of the magazine, and that's it. If you push the rounds all the way to the back of the magazine with just a little tap as you're loading the mag, they're 100% reliable. That's the missing ingredient and in why your gun isn't working like it's supposed to. So somebody who says the mags don't work probably isn't loading them right. The other thing that you guys are probably wondering about, and I've seen a lot of comments on the other P322 video, is that is there any buildup at the end of the barrel with the leading or whatever? No, I didn't have any leading with this one. It just has carbon buildup like you'd expect with about a 400 round range day on a 22. Now what is happening and something you're gonna have to be aware of is that there's already a significant buildup of carbon. I can't get it to show on camera because it's a matte black substance in a black anodized compensator. So it's just almost impossible to video. If you shoot a bunch of lead projectiles, there's a good chance that you're gonna get lead deposits at the bottom of the compensator and cleaning lead out of a compensator is a royal pain in the rear. So just know what you're signing up for with a compensated pistol if that's you. The other trick to reliability on a pistol like this, especially true of a compensated pistol, is you have to keep it oiled. Now, because this is a blowback design, there's really only rails at the back of the slide, so just a drop on either side with the slide locked back like this, a drop it in the front of the barrel, then put the slide and battery and a drop on the hood should be enough to have the slide cycling optimally. So you're gonna wanna do that each time you take it out of the safe because you just wanna make sure that the slide speed is optimum because 22, as we discussed, can be a very finicky round in a pistol. But as always, I appreciate you guys. Be sure you're subscribed and I will catch you on the next one.